Season 3 of The Mandalorian has introduced a ship which I really love, the Cumulus Class Corsair. This was, of course, the warship used by Pirate King Gorian Shard, which we saw taken down at the end of the most recent Mando episode. But there's actually a lot to dissect when it comes to this ship, and that's what we'll be doing in today's video. But let's start with the basics, the name, Cumulus Class Corsair. In the real world, Cumulus, it's a type of cloud, and that could indicate that the Corsair is actually optimized to work in atmosphere. So that's Cumulus, but Corsair, this actually gives us even more things to talk about. A Corsair in the real world, and presumably in Star Wars, is basically a piracy vessel. That's really interesting because it means either there's some ship maker building ships specifically for pirates, or perhaps this specific modification is so common that it's been given a specific designation. I'm thinking, for example, like the New Republic Assault Frigate, which was, of course, a modified dreadnought. In this episode, we did have hints of a greater pirate nation, so it is possible that these guys are pumping out their own ships. I've got to say, I was pretty much assuming that this was a repurposed ship. At first, I thought Imperial because of the look of the exterior bridge. However, we got a better look at the inside of the bridge this episode, and I don't know, something about it to me just screamed CIS. I think it's these monitors especially, but that was just a feeling. I will say, the sort of internal ship launching system would have also worked very, very well with droid starfighters, which in Revenge of the Sith, we see often just clamber across the surface of their ships. That, however, is just pure speculation, and I guess it's more likely that this is a new class of ship. But let's talk more about what she's sporting, because we get a better look at the Corsair in this episode as the Mandalorian and Bo-Katan take it apart piece by piece. First, the weaponry, and this is pretty interesting. The Corsair has four quick-firing quad laser cannons on the top side of the ship. On the bottom, we see 14, which is actually more than I expected, double turrets, which obviously can extend from the ship's bellies, almost like gun wells on an old pirate ship. This setup to me actually further cemented the idea that this could be a specifically designed piracy vessel made to operate in atmosphere because it's perfect for what Gorian Shard does here. Basically bullying planets which don't have the resources to fight back. You can bombard the citizens with your slow moving heavier cannons and they are slow moving, I'll get back to that, while you defend from real threats, i.e. any incoming aiding starfighters with the quicker quad laser cannons. But yeah, those turrets on the bottom, they're slow. In this episode, we see them fail to track the Mandalorian. It also appears that they may have a variable loadout. In episode one, we see very briefly one firing a traditional laser. Well, in this episode, they're bombarding the city with probably unguided rockets, but perhaps some other form of projectile. This could be like a mass driver or something, which is just shooting a projectile very, very quickly, a sort of basic weapon. It makes sense if Gorian Shard knew that they were going to bully a city instead of, you know, fly around and engage opponents in space, that he'd have them switch to this more destructive weapon. Overall, though, I think the way the turrets roll out is very interesting and very clever, especially for a pirate ship, which is probably trying to hide the full extent of its firepower when under scrutiny. When it comes to size, I would guess the ship is probably about 150 meters long. It does, however, manage to carry 12, albeit small, starfighters. We don't know the exact model of these. So far in show, they've only been referred to as snub fighters or pirate snub fighters. That's when listening to the descriptive audio. My guess, as I mentioned, is that it's some form of star chaser that was a legend ship, and their performance generally would match that. They have almost nothing in the way of shields. They're pretty fast and flitty, but certainly no match for a true, highly powered starfighter like the N1. I also get the feeling that the Corsair is not the most advanced ship in its own right. It does have shields, we hear from the bridge crew, but they're constantly being overwhelmed by even the Mandalorian's laser fire. On a really big warship like a Star Destroyer, you'd probably have dedicated shield projectors, and most likely you're not going to seriously damage components until you're popping through the shields itself. In this case, the shields are still standing, but most likely they're being overwhelmed because of, you know, only a few shield projectors, not enough power, thus the Mandalorian is getting through and even disabling weapons. It makes sense, this thing is a Corsair, it's going to be picking its targets and feasting on the vulnerable, it's not expecting to come across highly organized resistance. 
distance or even just two very powerful starfighters. Then obviously it's taken down because of the loss of presumably its engines and its repulsor lift generators. We actually see that Bo-Katan is firing missiles or rockets at the ship alongside lasers, which I thought it was a nice touch. And of course, while it crashes, it does have that SSD sound from Return of the Jedi. I didn't really find much else about the Corsair. I looked online, there was some stuff that Ryan Church posted, mostly about the paint scheme. He said that the original design was made first, the paint was added after, and he also made a post about the paint schemes on CIS ships in the Revenge of the Sith, maybe indicating that the Corsair could be of that vintage, but I'm not sure. Overall though, I said this in my review, I thought these scenes looked amazing. I don't know if it's the lighting or what, but they've really nailed how ships should look, especially in atmosphere like this. So I'm very excited to see hopefully more in terms of space combat in the rest of the Mandalorian season three and certainly moving forward. But that's all for today. Until next time, be safe. Have a good one and may the force be with you. Thank <laughs> you.